Brew Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the Riptide. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think, Jamil Zanachev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Howdy, hey, my Bruin brothers and sisters. Hey there, hi there, ho there. I'm as happy as can be. <laughs> B-R-E-W-S-T-R-O-N-N-G. Brew strong, brew strong. <laughs> what is this, the, the, the Disney hour? I like it. <laughs> Inspiration, that's all I can say. That's right, that's, that's, that's uh, where the hey, howdy, hey comes from is uh, some Disney thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I told the story long ago. About, uh, God, we were on some road trip out uh, to, uh, to God knows where in the old in the old RV. Uh huh. Still kicking the the beater RV, and uh, we were listening to some Disney Disney songs, and one of them had that in it. And my daughter was was big on that song, and so I told <laughs> her, I said, I'll use that for the the show, and so I have, and I have not gotten any sort of. Uh, legal notice from disney tonight <laughs> you see, <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah. it is it is has lasted uh, since then that was like nine years ago or something yeah Some insane, man, no doubt. insane amount of time speaking of insane have you seen our good friend john blickman recently not since homebrew con but yeah he was in fine fettle then <laughs> yeah he is one fine fettle kind of guy uh yet and mainly because he's super smart and a great engineer and he uh you know transmits those values down to you know the rest of the folks that he he hires and he works with and and the products that they produce i am truly impressed with all the innovations that they do and you know the quality of the products that they build are oh it's yeah. just outstanding i'm i'm just yeah. amazed um uh, you know he's he's invented things like you know the beer gun and and so many other things that yeah uh, just have innovated your brew day uh, i'm always really impressed i think it's if you're if you're looking at buying some equipment or buying you know or, or looking for a small professional brewery or even if you're you're looking for something on more budget friendly like a uh, you know the the anvil products uh they yep. got a full range of everything from the highest end from the pro to the to the to the pro amateur to the you know uh you know more cost conscious amateur uh they got it all check it out blickmanengineering.com uh you, you, you they really yourself. stand behind everything they make. Oh, absolutely. John Blickman's yeah. that way. He wouldn't, yeah. you know, if something's wrong, he's he's on it. I just, you know, uh, gave away at uh, the last Homebrew Con our brew system mm. that was handed down from you to the Brewing Network, and we gave it to a <laughs> Brewing Network listener. Oh, yeah? And... Um, you just want to get that shit out of your, your house. <laughs> it was time to. It was time to just move it along, you know, to another someone who's going to use it. It's time to, to pull the old uh, uh, rugs and shit that were uh, yeah. piled on top of it. Yeah. But I struggled to also give away my Terminator, my Blickman Terminator, with it. <laughs> yeah. Because it's still like shiny and new, and it works so great. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna brew again someday. No, you're not. And <laughs> face the reality. But that's such a good product that I just was like, I mean, they can buy a chiller. I'm giving them the whole system. I really wanted yeah. to keep my Blickman Terminator, but I didn't. I gave it to them too. <laughs> Good products is what I'm saying. I hear you. Yeah. It's such a good chiller. Like, I know that if I brew again, I'm just going to buy that again. So I felt like 
Ah, I just don't want to give it away, but I did. You're not going to brew again. It's just the reality. Well, that was part of my <laughs> ration, reasoning why I did in the end. Not just, because I could part with my Blickman products, but right. because I won't use them. Right. Clear all that crap out of your house. You're, you're not going to yeah. use them. I still yeah, have your, up I, I didn't give away your conical, though. I do have your conical if you want that back. You asked me for it a while ago, and I was like, no, I'm using it. Oh, but, did I? Yeah. What size is it? It's the big one. The 28? Mm, maybe. It's big. Uh, yeah, just ship it out to the same person that won the... Uh, no, no, no. I, I'll raffle that separately if we're giving it away. Uh, sure. I don't think I don't think I have a use for it at the brewery. Okay, that person ended up being a pro, like turning pro anyway. So I was kind of like, in the end, I was oh, like, well, yeah. I didn't really want this to go to a pro brewery. It's a little dickish. It needs to go to somebody who. Uh, yeah, like uh, it's a, it's like home brewing. That's what I thought, and but at that point, I couldn't. I didn't like put in a bunch of rules, you know. I just was like, oh, it's, we're raffling off to a homebrew, to you're a just, listener. You're just glad you're getting that out of your... No, I was glad to give house. it to a listener. I felt like, you know, I wasn't just going to sell it, you know what I mean? I was, right, right. It needs yeah, to go, yeah. like it needs to right. stay in the family, I felt that, like. That, 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 a lot of award-winning beer been brewed on that. Yeah. Not, it, when, yeah. You, not when you brewed on it, but when no, I brewed on it. right. Yeah. 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 It needs to be. It needs to be brought back to its former glory. Right, is what I right, felt, you right. know. Somebody should be cranking out on that thing. If he, uh, I mean, if he's using it, I mean, I cranked his, out on it a couple of times. If that's what you mean. <laughs> yeah, but, I saw those stains. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it's you know if if he's using it as a, like a pilot system at his at his brewery or something well, like that's that, I, I don't know. I didn't want to pry too much because I well, felt bad. I, you this, know, send me his contact I, info. I, I need to pry. move my old okay. system as well. You, you're ready to go, I'll, I'll, ready to raffle yeah. yours off too. I'll be yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we I'll, I'll give him crap. I'll be like, hey, I give it. Yeah, the, he needs to back. hand it down to a listener. Right, right. You know exactly. You know, if you're a pro, good, then go right. to More Beer or Blickman and buy a uh, uh, yeah, the, the buy pro. a pilot system. Right. You know. Yeah, we'll uh, see. He's we'll probably see. listening or will listen, and then he's going to be like. Hey, why are you throw me under the bus? Yeah. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I didn't do anything. Well, we told you what you did. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we, get, I, we get angry at people for no for no logical reason. reason. Yeah. Yes. That's pretty much how we work. Yeah. This is the Bring Network. You've listened before, haven't you? Yeah, you can do like real things, and we're not mad about that. Right, right. It's right. Like stuff like this that bothers <laughs> it's the stuff us. Stuff we imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's like my wife. She imagines I did something, and then she's upset. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, wow. That, this is totally unexpected. Now, uh, I've, yeah. My, my, Three for a curve. The, the system has moved on. My Blickman Therminator and, and the Morbier system. Yes. It has moved on. I mean, it's still at Morbier right now because they're getting it, like, back in, in tip top shape before sending it. They're getting so we up. could still derail <laughs> the delivery. They're getting the, 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 the couple of although, stains off of it. And... Although I gave it away in June, so it's been derailed by me already, clearly. It's still in California. Hmm. Um, and Where's I still have, have to, to give my Therminator because I brought it thinking right. I'm not giving away my Therminator, but I have since decided I will. And so now I have to go bring that last piece. Where, also. where is the winner located? New Jersey. Oh, Jesus Christ. You ship it across the country. I got to pay shipping because <laughs> I did, also be didn't put dollars. that in the fine print. That's going to be a grand. To yeah. So the whole thing didn't make any money for the brewing network, basically, no, once no, you count yeah, all that. Right. Huh. Luckily, the more beer guys are nice, and they're just doing, you know, they're just going right. to refurb it however it needs to be done. Right. You know, I'm like, charge me for stuff, and they're like, no, no, we're, don't worry. Um, but it's still in Concord, basically. Maybe we should drive it. Maybe we should put a strap it to the top of the RV, Jamil. There you go. <laughs> drive it out. This is, sounding, this is sounding good. To I New like Jersey. This. I like this. In the winter. <laughs> it's yes. coming up. Maybe we get it out to Nashville, and he meets us in Nashville for the homebrew. So conference. I am going to drive to Nashville. I'm there driving you go. to that. Have him meet you in Nashville. He's already been uptight about it taking this long. Oh, so well, I can't uh, hear you, Bebo. Sorry, Bebo. Ju- justifiably, though. Yeah, it's been a while, you know. <laughs> Has he ever listened to the Brewing Network before? This and I is, wanted to say why, that. Why would you expect things you have to a go point. quickly? Why would you expect us not to talk about this? Uh, and imagine yeah. some, something negative uh, <laughs> out of the whole thing. He's right. probably the nicest person on the planet. <laughs> right. uh, I would say drive it to Nashville. Yeah, and then you could always ship it from Nashville to New Jersey. 
he can ship it to New Jersey. Right. And that's just, you know, just very, very much cheaper. Well, then we you can should now... always put a, a caveat on every I raffle know, prize. I know, it's and like, I didn't do that. Pick it up at the homebrew conference. Right. Uh-huh. Well, uh-huh. I should have. The problem, you know, was that the last one was in Providence. So that's why right. I was like, I'm not I'm driving to Providence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. sure. And so now I get Palmer. Maybe we'll throw yours in the same trailer, and we'll, you, you know, if you got to give yeah. yours away too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we load it up. <clears throat> I'm goods. running out of room in the shop. There we go. That, um, or you just pay the thousand dollars to ship it. It's going to be. That's what's going to happen. You know, more beer is probably going to get me a discount because they right. ship a bunch of stuff, and yeah. then I'll just give them that in advertise. It's all going to come out right. in the wash, I'm right. sure. Yeah, that's the thing to do. Yeah, send them the damn thing. Yeah. Throw the Terminator in there. I that's what I well that's what started all this. I'm giving him my Terminator because and I do, and I'm sad. That's I'm sad about that. I really like my Blickman Terminator. There you go. Well, that's the show. That's all we had time for. <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, speaking of the show. Oh, speaking of, yeah, speaking of the show, uh, we got uh, a good one for you. Uh, today and uh, tomorrow and uh, going on, uh, we're going to talk about uh, you know the practical aspects of barrel aging. I mean everything from uh, you know recipe Picking. to yeah selecting barrels to maintaining barrels, moving barrels, uh, everything from I mean, this the the the. the talk that we're going to cover was designed for pro brewers, but there's a lot of applicable uh, material to uh, home brewers or homebrew clubs as well, yeah. uh, you know, because it's, it's barrel aging. There's, there's really uh, uh, pro or, or, or amateur. It's just the probably the number of barrels that you're willing to do. Yeah. Uh, In fact, we're going to do two, maybe even three shows on this. So as soon as you hear this particular show, Send in your questions, and we can address them on the second and third shows. If you're listening uh, live. Regarding barrel aging, yes. Yes. Right. Um, and I think we may sneak in a uh, Jay-Z's medical corner at some point. There's been a lot of questions. Uh, <laughs> Lots am, of experiments. I am still alive. There's definitely more questions than answers. Nobody my, really my knows what's wrong with you. My testicles are generally the same size now. Uh, all those things. We'll, we'll answer those uh, coming up in a, in a Jay-Z's Medical Corner, so stand by for that. All right. Um, do you want to take a short break, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to uh, uh, barrel aging. We're going to talk first about the objectives of barrel aging right after this. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. Back to the beer guys that make other beer guys look like wine guys. Brew strong. All right, we're back. We're talking about uh, barrel aging. Everything to do about barrel aging from uh, soup to nuts, from A to Z, from um, uh, the the head beginning to, to end, beginning to the from the beginning to the end. Mm. I never thought of that one. That, that is. <laughs> From head to bung. Ah, there you go. That's what you were trying to think of. From head to bung. Uh, Yes, from the heads to the bungs. Um, uh, First off, you know, like we like to do, I kind of like to define what we're talking about. And uh, in this case, you know, the objectives of barrel aging. You know, the, the, the true purpose of barrel aging is to develop... Uh, certain flavors and aromas that, and you know, in your beer that are reminiscent of barrel aging, um, that be, you know, um, give wood. the beer a character, wood or other characters that, uh, you know, uh, elevate the beer to another level, integrate well with the beer, make the beer taste. You know, better or you know, uh, special. 
So that's kind of the objective of, uh, you know, barrel aging. Uh, you know, there's another objective, which is for the prober of marketing. You know, when you say something's barrel aged, um, you know, it's, it's exciting for the consumer. They'll, they will pay more because, I don't know, they've kind of been trained to <laughs> pay more for barrel aged beers or. Has a certain cachet to it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I think, you know, so that's kind of an important part of uh, barrel aging for the, uh, uh, you know, pro level brewer uh, or, you know, the commercial brewer. And, you know, even for, uh, you know, the uh, home brewer saying, hey, this is barrel aged, you know, when you're at a fest or, you know, sharing it with uh, friends, I think that that can have some, uh, you know, zing to it as well. Uh, Flavor and aroma development in the barrel is coming from a a few things. Uh, one is uh, things like uh, bacteria, uh, Britannomyces. Uh, you know, the, the bacteria will uh, consume some of the sugars, available sugars, and will produce uh, acids and flavors that will, uh, you know, uh, change the, the flavor and aroma of the beer. Same mm-hmm. thing with Britannomyces. Um, that can consume, uh, you know, longer chain sugars, starches. It can even consume some of the wood uh, starches, and uh, you know, develop flavors, a unique set of flavors, and dry out the beer. Yeah, uh, Jim. Jim, I'm gonna stop you right there. Yeah. Would you say that there are three, maybe four classes of barrel aged beers? I'm hearing hmm. uh, there's you know strictly wood aged, hmm, 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 hmm. then maybe a sour beer, mm-hmm. and then or maybe and or a Brett beer, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then maybe a combination of Brett and sour. Would you say that's accurate, or would you diff- divvy them up a little bit differently? Right. Um, well, and uh, you know I think even with the the sour and the and the bread um, and the combination of those, you will get uh, you know some wood character as well. I mean, it depends yeah. how long it's resident in the barrel, what kind of barrel. Um, yeah. You know, but some, it's possible to get a wood only barrel age without any bread or without yes, any sour. Ab- as well. Absolutely. So I would, I would maybe, I, I think you're right. Um, I would, uh, you know, divvy it up maybe into two, at least, where you're saying there's the clean barrel aged with where you're getting wood character. And you also get character of what was resident in the barrel before. And then there's the the one with uh, bread or bacteria with uh, live organisms producing some other flavors. Uh, so I generally think of them as, as those yeah. two, okay. and that's how we separate them in our brewery. But um, I, I'm intrigued by your thoughts on, uh, you know, maybe there's a, a, a finer definition there. Um, the other yeah. the other thing th- that happens when you put beer in barrels is uh, since it is not an oxygen-proof uh, storage vessel, like a stainless vessel, you know, you get some oxidative uh, uh, related compounds uh, occurring, and um, you know the longer it's in there, the type of wood that you're using that can affect that. And uh, you'll always get staling compounds it, for a beer that's stored. Staling compounds are just something that happens over time. So if you just keep a beer for a year in a can, or you know in a in a in a stainless container, uh, you know at room temperature for a year you're going to pick up some staling compounds in that and that can be a a good thing uh in certain types of beers and it can be a bad thing it depends on what you're trying to develop but that also is is part of the flavor and aroma development that occurs in barrels and then of course like uh, john was saying you're going to get that uh, barrel wood flavor transfer uh you're getting a transfer of what was in the barrel before or if you're doing a new barrel you're gonna get you know more wood uh but generally those are the things that you're looking at for flavor and aroma development uh yeah. bacteria and brett oxidative and staling and then uh, uh you get the transfer of the wood or what was in the barrel or both yeah yeah, I've let, I've met a lot of homebrewers that uh, are you know buying small new barrels, mm-hmm. um, you know not previously used wine barrels because right. they don't have 
you know, 50 gallons of beer to throw in there, but, uh-huh. you know, often the smaller barrels. And, uh, yeah, they're often wondering how to use them and what characters to get and how long to put it in there. Right. So I just I wanted to bring up kind of that wood-only ca- category sure, sure. for the new new barrels. Well, and we'll get into that. It, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, those small barrels, when they're new, man, there's a lot of oak that comes across or or whatever the wood is that really comes across uh in a bold way and you have to be very careful of how to uh kind of deal with that and not make you know a a tannic mess yeah Um, yeah one thing i want to mention about the marketing you know uh, you you can enhance your marketing with uh you know of a beer uh you know by mentioning the type of barrel um where the barrel came from uh, and the process that you use. So, uh, for example, uh, I will make, uh, you know, our um, sour beer uh, agony at Heretic, and we will, I will say, you know, these are Napa Valley wine barrels. Uh, you know, this is, or, you know, uh, for our, our beer Hawari, it's Napa Valley Chardonnay barrels. Uh, and, you know, we age it for, you know, two years in the barrel, et cetera, et cetera. Or, uh, you know, we use the, the Britannomyces that we harvested that's unique to our valley. We put that in. So all those things, uh, you know, when you're when you're talking about barrel aged beer and you're trying to come up with, a you know, a sell sheet or something like that, you need to, you know, uh, you know, talk about the barrel because that's the thing that people are keying on. It's not like, yeah. well, I use crystal malt in this. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> tell, tell them more about the barrel. And that yeah. will help you. You know, sell more uh, barrel aged beer, make it more special. The more things you can mention. Yeah, that's that's incredibly important. I think. Right. Well, you know, the, the longer I do this, uh, you know, commercial beer thing, the more <laughs> I, uh, you know, kind of get into. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, even just me as a consumer, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, the, you know, thousands, literally thousands of beer beers on the shelves. And, yeah, I'm looking for what beer is going to capture my attention, offer some story mm-hmm. that I can potentially, you know, drink into or buy into. Right. Um, you know, what what's going to make this beer more interesting than that beer? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I want to know those stories. Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah, uh, you know, there's so many barrels uh, available from brokers nowadays. I think there's there's a lot of possibilities there. Um, possible beer styles. That's the other thing. I I think yeah. that you're not limited to you know one type of beer. You know, when a lot of this started uh, a couple of decades ago, you know, it was pretty much taking a stout and putting it in a you know whiskey or bourbon barrel. <laughs> And that was it. And that just blew everybody's minds. And that, mm-hmm. that was great. But I, I think that today, uh, with the creativity that's going on, you know, the, the styles are limitless. You know, it's, it's no longer that. Uh, you know, the, the traditional stuff is big stouts, dark beers in uh, whiskey barrels, bourbon barrels, and sour beer in uh, wine barrels. That's kind of traditional that's what's been going on it's a, yeah. it's a it's a great thing to do i mean i uh, that's what we do at heretic we do we do all those but we do some special stuff and there's you know a more modern take on it um our, our good friend um in uh, uh john blickman no he used to be used oh. to, oh. god my memory is shot with these drugs uh at fate uh oh um, fate, fate, fate. Uh, or used to be a fate. Um, oh my God. Er? Nope. No. Oh, Arta? Uh, okay. Jeff. Jeff, <laughs> yes, thank you. Jeff Griffith, uh, right? A fate, or used to be a fate. Fantastic brewer. Uh, one of the things that he and I worked on when, when I think it, when it was, I think it's when you and I drove out in the in the RV, or no, we drove out with uh, what's her name, Daniela, <laughs> Daniela, mm-hmm. oh, out okay. to GBF, and we didn't we stop at uh, uh, the brewery in Colorado, and Jeff was there, at, yeah, at at in Golden, Colorado, Golden, right, yeah, right. 
And we were working on uh, Goza before that um, via email and stuff. And uh, Jeff is just – he's just – the most wonderful person he you know has perfected goza if you ask me and um he did a goza in tequila barrels uh while he was at fate and it was just uh spectacular i thought that that was a perfect beer um you know good combination of the the tequila flavor you know kind of the uh little bit of acidity and a little bit of uh you know a very minor amount of salt and uh you know in the in the goza you know, a brilliant uh, adaption of, uh, you know, modern styles and, and uh, barrel aging. People do, you know, things like lagers in in New Oak. They'll do IPA and wine barrels. I mean, you could do almost anything you want. You know, the key is, you know, you got to have the right, uh, you know, beer for the right barrel. You're talking about uh, combining flavors. Yeah. Vision and balance. Mm-hmm. And you have to... You know, think about uh, any staling or oxidative, uh, you know, characteristics that you're going to get that may, uh, you know, affect the beer and change the beer to a point where it's not good. If you if you take a, um, you know, certain beers and then you add this kind of staling character to them, uh, some some work. Like, uh, you know, a lot of the staling can be this kind of. Uh, overtly sweet caramel kind of character and if you add that to something that's a roasty stout that could be nice you add that to you know a light lager it just tastes stale yeah so you have to kind of be careful about that yeah i think i think that's a very important consideration you know Smell the barrel, you know, understand what was in it before, mm-hmm. and think about the characters that kind of wood and that, that type, you know, what that barrel was previously used for, what those will contribute to the beer. Um, there's one recommendation out there is to, you know, tweak your recipe and you know, back off on some of the uh, the roast bitterness to mm-hmm. compensate for mm-hmm. roast character that may come from the barrel, mm-hmm. or you know, um, or if you're looking to get you know in a malt forward beer, uh, if you're looking to get some of those interesting oxidative flavors, you know, then give that recipe some additional residual dextrins for that to work on. Well, Likewise, if you're souring it. And that, that's an uh, excellent point. I think you need to take into account, um, you know, how the barrel is, uh, you know, produced, even if you're doing a new barrel, or even more so if you're doing a new barrel. So you can do barrels that, you know, have a light toast. You can do ones that have a heavy toast, medium toast, you know, any range. And then, you know, when you're talking about whiskey barrels, and stuff, they get charred. It's actual charcoal that gets produced, which, you know, produces a lot of those roasty flavors. So um, you got to take that all into account. All right, let's do this. Let's take another break. And when we come back, we'll talk about more about flavor development right after this. Are you looking for a simple brewing system that's great for all grain brewing, but everything on the market seems to be full of compromises? Blickman Engineering has the answer. The Blickman Brew Easy All Grain Brewing System. The Brew Easy is a complete system with easy upgrades and a beautiful compact design, perfect for any size brewing location. At its core, the Brew Easy is built on two gorgeous Blickman Boilermaker brew kettles, a high temperature March pump, and either a top tier gas burner or the new boil coil electric heater. The Brew Easy adapter lid allows the pots to stack on top of each other, forming an efficient, strong, and compact brewing setup that comes in 5, 10, and 20-gallon batch sizes. Upgrade your BrewEasy system with full automated control by adding a Blickman Tower of Power temp controller and make moving around easy with the Blickman Kettle Cart. The BrewEasy is modular. If you already own a Boilermaker kettle, you can build your BrewEasy by purchasing just the modules you need. The new BrewEasy all-grain brewing system. See it today at BlickmanEngineering.com and brew with Blickman quality on your new BrewEasy. Back to the two guys that know how to turn beer into beer. This is Brew Strong. (laughs) 
It was almost identical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, I, I could just fill in if the, the, the board ever breaks or something. I can, I can just jump right in there. <laughs> Done. Um, yeah. So we're talking about uh, the flavor and flavor development in the barrels and, you know, why you are, uh, you know, barrel aging and all that. And for flavor development, um, like we said, there's there's basically those three basic vectors, the barrel and wood flavor transfer oxidative and staling compounds, and then bacteria and Britannomyces activity. That's pretty much it. Uh, your barrel flavor transfer, when I talk about barrel flavor, I'm talking about the uh, compounds in the beer, in the barrel, that were previously resident before you put in the beer. So like a whiskey barrel, uh, you transfer your beer in there. Immediately, you're going to get some of that whiskey flavor uh, from that. If it's a, a red wine barrel and you put in, a, you know, a, a really pale, uh, you know, uh, beer, um, you're going to pick up, you know, some of that color and you're going to transfer some of that flavor. So that's the fastest, uh, you know, uh, transfer of or fastest flavoring that's going to happen. You know, it's going to be your bourbon, your wine, your tequila, rum, whatever was in that barrel. That's going to come first. And then you're going to get the wood flavor transfer. And right now we're talking mainly about uh, this. This occurs in uh, clean uh, wood only beers like John was talking about. And also in the sour Britannomyces beers. Um, and there's well, maybe there's there's three categories, John. There's the, the, the wood <laughs> only. And then there's the clean other. Uh, you know, or the you know non-sour other compounds like uh, you know Britannomyces that okay. uh, don't necessarily sour, and then there's the sour ones, which yeah. is, can have Britannomyces, generally do, uh, but also have bacteria that's sour. So maybe yeah. three categories. Okay, would you say? Yeah, um, I agree with that. Yeah. See, here, l- listen to us here defining things for for the uh, interwebs. Um, uh, the wood flavor transfer. Now it's going to take uh, much longer than the uh, you know beer uh, flavor transfer or the barrel flavor transfer that was there previously. Uh, these are compounds like uh, uh, vanilla, caramel, uh, spicy compounds, tobacco, sometimes uh, any, anything oaky, woody uh, compounds. All those are from your your wood flavor transfer. Those can take. Uh, you know, in a new barrel, a small new barrel, that can, that can happen in a week or two uh, to a used uh, bourbon barrel that's been 10 years aging bourbon, uh, you know, to get more wood flavor out of that, that can sometimes take, uh, you know, you can get some at about uh, two, three months, but generally, you know, closer to a year, you start to develop some of those those wood flavors more. Oxidation and age. Um, the the staling and the oxidation. Um, the staling's really independent of the barrel in a way. Uh, you know, we're talking the heat and age staling. Uh, temperature is more of a factor, and the duration, the amount of time that you're letting it sit, is more of a factor than the fact that you put in a barrel. Uh, the barrel will affect more oxygen staling, oxidative uh, staling compounds. Okay. And that's dependent on how thick the staves are, what the oak is, uh, what kind of uh, tree it came from. You know, French oak tends to pass more oxygen. American oak tends to be a denser, harder wood and okay. less let less oxygen in. The size of the vessel, those giant fooders that you see, um, one of the reasons that they use something that large is uh, your surface area to, to beer ratio, you're getting less oxidative staling. Uh, when you get down, the smaller the vessel, the more oxidative staling you're going to get. Uh, so that's that's one of the things to keep in mind. One of the purposes... Yeah, I, think I just want to emphasize sure. that American wood harder than the French. I think that's important. Much harder wood. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've experienced, you know, and I've been to France a couple of times, and uh, I just think we have harder. Uh, yeah. Very very much like a strong oak limb here. 
Uh, th- those oxidation and staining compounds can give you some rich malt flavors or things that people tend to think of as uh, rich and malty. Uh, you know, it is a staining compound. There's that kind of caramel, that sweet caramel I keep talking about. Um, there is, you know, some uh, you know, things that people say, oh, that's malty. It's actually staling compounds that can go well in a beer. Um, one of the other and the most important things about uh, oxygen in these things is, you know, the development of uh, fruity compounds. So sometimes, like, you know, you're barrel aging oh, yeah. a, um, you know, a, a English barley wine. that has got this rich, you know, licorice and these other compounds and malty. And what you're looking for, what a lot of people are looking for is kind of Venice uh, fruitiness that occurs over time. And one of the ways that happens is the... Uh, some of the higher alcohols uh, along Esther. with some acids, uh, yes, ex- exactly, produce some of those esters. And that's, you know, part of what you're looking for in, in, in one of these. Um, you know, the the uh, oxygen, you know, plays a role in it as well. You can uh, develop more of these, you know, fruity esters over time. So that's that's another one that, uh, you know, time and, and uh, uh, condition uh, will enhance or detract from those uh, yeah. uh, fruity ester development. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I think no. it may be a good idea to just mention here that forced aging to try to develop these characters faster, mm. not a good idea, correct? I agree with you 100%. Um, you know, anything good takes time, it seems. Yeah. I've never found a good shortcut to... Um, Good barrel aging, and that even includes you know trying to do small barrels because it's faster. Mm-hmm. You're you're yes, you're going to get uh, you know some of that oak faster, but uh, and I guess if you did that and then transferred it to a like a carboy maybe and you know maybe you could do it. I don't know. You know, yeah. there's it's just an issue with that. I think. Yeah. Well, I've heard this. I've heard this from several brewers. Um, uh, Julian Trago from Beechwood, mm-hmm. uh, Jen Talley, uh, you know, from Auburn. Um, you know, she says, you know, make sure you give the give the beer in the barrel sufficient time, at least six months. Mm-hmm. Some people will, you know, be tasting the beer along the way and they say, wow, it's got so much oak character. I need to pull it now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. before it gets any more. But she she argues that in fact, if you give it more time, you'll go through a transition where a lot of that tannin will start to settle out, and the beer will actually mellow in the barrel over the course of a year. Right, I I agree. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, you know when we when I was doing this on a commercial scale, uh, I think you know we were worried that you know going past uh, you know a couple of months. Two three months was it was going to get too oaky, and there was going to be a problem with the beer, or maybe it would get sour or whatever. And so we were initially doing, you know, two three months on some of our our bourbon barrel aged beers, our wood only beers, and then um, I don't know what what made me do it, but you know I I pushed past that, and we started going to a year to two years. And an interesting thing happens, like you're saying, the t- I'm not sure that the tannins are really dropping out or you're developing more of that rich kind of malty character or you're pulling other compounds from the wood that have a lot of that vanilla and caramel and those are kind of balancing out the tannins. Um, it's hard, hard to say exactly what's happening there, but... Uh, uh, you know, it's it's caused me to go much further, much longer in our in our wood barrel aged uh, program than I did before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Time time can you know time can do uh, a lot of a lot of interesting things. And one of the things that we do, and we'll get into this later, is um, I always keep some uh, unbarreled beer in stainless, so uh-huh. that when I get that beer, you know, from the barrel, you know, sometimes the flavors are a bit too intense and you're something's overriding you got an overriding flavor and if you add back a little bit of unbarreled beer it's almost like adding a little bit of water to whiskey 
it opens up and it blooms and you get all these different flavors coming out all of a sudden. It's the same nice. thing. You add a little bit of unbarreled beer and it develops. It, it, it lets those f- compounds, those flavors, you know, work on their own stage a little bit. And you get far more flavors out of it. So that's one of the tricks that we'll talk about later. Um, let's see. Uh, bacteria. So the bacteria that we, you would use if you're doing a sour beer is obviously souring, uh, which is you know, development of acids to lower the pH, and all, it also uh, dries out the beer a little bit um, you know, through the, the further consumption of sugars that are available. Uh, the Britannomyces will do a similar thing. It's also going to dry out the beer, but it will go much further. It will consume a lot of the longer chain starches. It will even consume some of the wood of the barrel. Um, and the interesting thing about uh, Britannomyces and, and possibly any yeast, Britannomyces, it, it just keeps going. Whereas you add some other yeast, they will die off and just kind of go inert and stop. But Britannomyces keeps chugging along and, and finds something to do. And that's one of the reasons that pe- people will use Britannomyces in barrel age projects. One of the things is any yeast, and Britannomyces in particular in, in barrel aging, it will uh, clean up a lot of the uh, oxidative staling. Uh, yeah. One of the, one of the first things that happens uh, in the consumption of breaking down of the sugars and all that for the, for the yeast to consume, uh, you know, this, this food is uh, to use oxygen uh, as part of that process. And if the... The one of the things that happens is you can take a, a stale beer and you can add Brett to it. And yeah, I've, I've had a stale beer. In, so we make a beer called Worry. It's a Belgian uh, golden. And it's very light color. And we put in these Chardonnay barrels. And I don't know what happened, but, uh, you know, we're on this one batch we were doing. Somebody somehow missed adding the Brett to two barrels. And the beer was dark brown. Look at that brown ale. <laughs> the others were all bright and clear. I told my guys, I'm like, well, just add the bread to it now. They're like, well, no, we need to dump these. They're they're all brown and stale and yucky. And I'm like, no, no, just add the bread. It'll clean it up. And they're like, no, that doesn't work. I'm like, yes, it'll work. Um, Dr. Lewis at UC Davis was had talked about this before. Um, but you add the the bread to those and within a month two months they were bright and clear and tasted the same as the other ones yeah so, it's interesting how well how we'll do that yeah uh, i had a i had a belgian double that was uh phenolic mm-hmm. and added added bread and souring mm-hmm, to it mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. and yeah it ate up the phenolics uh cleaned it right up it was really a lovely sour after that yeah brett is amazing uh the the phenols are used as a substrate for some of those uh you know barnyard classic uh you know what people think of as brett um, yeah uh, the phenols are, are a necessary substrate for the development of those flavors so um that's another great thing about brett you know brett brett's pretty amazing in what it can do it's uh you know one of my favorite yeasts i don't know um and uh let's see uh and then you know time flavor development uh like john was saying takes time Uh, there is no set time it it could be from a few days to a few years Uh, i generally think anything past a few years although (laughs) now i say that i have a beer that is been it's it's coming up on four or five years now um and generally you can't but there are i guess exceptions when you can all right um let's take another short break and when we come back we will uh, wrap up with a little bit about uh, recipe design right after this Learning to brew has never been so disgusting. This is Brew Strong. All right, we're back. One of the things that's uh, important, uh, like uh, John was alluding to, was uh, you know the 
the recipe you design, how you uh, develop uh, or you know your beer recipe to go with what you were trying to achieve in the barrel and uh, to match the barrel flavoring. Um, one of the most common things I get asked is, uh, you know, your sour recipe design. How do you, uh, you know, what people are are most of the time think? Well, I'll just brew, uh, you know, a brown ale or a porter or imperial stout, and I'll throw that into, you know, a bourbon barrel, and that's what I'm done. Souring, <clears throat> you know, becomes a whole different kind of uh, animal. One of the things to know about developing sour beers is that alcohol and bitterness are the enemy of the souring process. It hurts the bacteria and the yeast. They, uh, you know, high IBU uh, will uh, negatively impact, the, you know, the, um, the yeast. So you really want to go, you know, a, a few IBUs at most. Sometimes we'll throw in a token amount of uh, hops in order to, you know, we're, we're targeting maybe five IBU, six IBU, and no more than that. Um, and we won't go high ABV. Generally, um, I'll target around 6% uh, ABV. One, because that's a more marketable uh, ABV. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can go lower than that. Going higher than that is really starts to get a little bit more problematic. I wouldn't, wouldn't go much past the 6%. Yeah. I, I can't think of any high gravity sours that, uh, except maybe, maybe one of Russian rivers or so that. Yeah. Consecration uh, is up there. I mean, we've, we've done some, um, I've got a beer that's, you know, 15% sitting in a barrel, uh, with some souring, and it really does not sour much at that point. Mm. It it's pretty pretty proof against souring. Yeah, um, that makes sense. When you when you get down, when you get to ten percent plus, it becomes tricky. We we've uh, soured um, a Belgian strong, uh, but even then, the souring be, is becomes subtle when you're when you're past ten percent. Um, okay. It just becomes one of those things. I think consecration is ten percent as well. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. And they're they're actually getting a quite sour now. Um, the most recent samples I've had have been a lot of. Uh, if you use Brett uh, in conjunction, you can sometimes get more souring. Um, it'll break down some of those compounds. Right. Okay. But you know the takeaway is that. Um, alcohol and bitterness are, are really the enemy of souring, um, <clears throat> and you need you know your proper process. It takes time. Um, generally, you know, souring in the barrel uh, on something like this, we give it a minimum of a year. Um, we we do barrels, you know, one, two, and three years old. Past that. Um, it, it tends to be a problem. You start getting more uh, rougher souring and a little more harshness. And so we generally limit ourselves to three years, but we don't tend to harvest anything um, less than a year. Uh, a lot of times it'll be, uh, you know, uh, 16 months, 18 months, and then we'll blend that with, uh, you know, two, two and a half year, maybe maybe up to three year, depending on flavor. Um, mm -hmm. You generally need uh, a lower temperature. Um, there's a kind of a rule that you'll see talked about from Belgian uh, brewers that it's 20 C. You don't want to exceed 20 C, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, yeah. The hotter temperatures um, will, uh, you know, result in in harsher harsher flavors. So we need to find kind of a cool place to do it. I believe in less oxygen is is better. Um, mm -hmm. you need some, but I tend to prefer the American oak barrels, the tighter grain, uh, uh, harder barrels. They have some French ones that are tighter grain as well. Um, if you're doing something on the commercial scale, a, a blend of them, I don't worry too much about getting French barrels or American oak barrels, uh, cause you tend to get a blend of them from Napa wineries cause they will blend some of those flavors as well. And what I'll do is you know, we'll just 
brew 90 barrels or 120 barrels of wort and fill those barrels. And then <clears throat> as they develop, you know, uh, we're like, well, a little bit more oxygen in this one was nice. And the French one, we'll blend it with this American one. Um, you know, we'll kind of pick and choose, uh, you know, the flavors that we like. So having a few of each kind can be beneficial in that that uh, aspect. Or you can go to a larger vessel uh, where the surface area ratio is um, a little bit better, where um, like where a fooder, like a fooder, yeah, and you're getting, uh, or you can do, you know, even larger punchins, you know, larger barrels, um, and that could possibly, uh, you know, be a that'll benefit. have a different character than the smaller mm-hmm. barrel, yeah. less oxygen. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, like John was mentioning uh, earlier, you need those, uh, you know, certain compounds, those, the substrates for this flavor development. Um, it, you know, if you're doing just a clean lactic souring, uh, you know, simple sugars uh, will will speed that along. Um, you know, be be aware that a lot of these uh, uh, lactic, uh, these bacterias have a, a uh, a bottom uh, pH that they will go to. So a lot of them will uh, zero out at, uh, you know, their activity, you know, in the low threes. Some of them will go to like maybe 2.8, but uh, they all have some limit to uh, how much acid they'll produce and what kind of environment they'll they'll continue to function in. In that case, you can start with, uh, if you want something more sour, you can start with your, your bacteria and then uh, add Brett later, which will dry out the beer a bit more. Um, every yeast produces acid in its process and will uh, change the acidity as well. So you can you can get it really low if you want it really sour. I don't tend to like those, but uh, some people do. Uh, and also, you know, if you're going to be adding Brett in your in your sour beer design, um, you know, some phenols if you want to get those, you know barnyard type compounds those rustic things those um horse blanket things that they say um it's depending on uh, uh, an array of phenols which you can produce through using uh, a phenol positive yeast in your initial ferment uh so like a you know 530 550 540 you know all white labs i, I just know the white labs numbers i'm sorry but a belgian yeast that is phenol positive um you know you 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 ferment that in your stainless or your glass carboy or whatever first you let that yeast settle out you transfer it to the barrel and then you add your lactic acid and your bread or you can add it in the the stainless or uh, whatever and the most important thing is you know as you see these beers develop in the barrels uh, you need to taste on a regular basis and see how they're developing. Give them time, and then um, you can. Uh, uh, what kind uh, of interval do you blend recommend as well? Uh, it depends. You know, a lot of these. You know, when when we first started, out, I was tasting them like monthly. Uh, a lot of them. You know, we don't uh, really taste them for six months now, uh, six months to a year. And then we start tasting them. There's a lot, oh. more, you know, a lot more tasting as we get ready to to blend and package something. We will, you know, go through all the, the barrels that we think we'll we'll need, and we'll until we find the right right numbers of them, and we'll we'll taste them all and go, okay, this one's in, this one's out. Uh, we'll find barrels that we need to dump. Um, always count on the fact that you're going to need to dump some of those barrels. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, some that just need more time. Uh, and then, you know, you'll find your, your selection that need a blend. Um, you know, it takes it takes a lot of time. You know, if you've got, you know, a, a lot of barrels, there's, there's a lot of tasting to, to be done there. But, you know, one of the things, and I think uh, John talked about this before, is there's no short, shortcuts. You can't you know, raise the temperature and make it go faster. You can, but it's not going to taste good. You know, uh, you can't uh, introduce more oxygen. You can't, uh, you know, just pour in acid. All these things, you know, you just end up with a, you know, an unpleasant uh, sour beer. You, yeah, you, you know, can't do faster, better, cheaper with sour beers. Yeah. And, you can only do better. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that 
you know, consumers will still pay a premium for, you know, a barrel, uh, a beer that, you know, sat in a barrel for, you know, two, three years and, uh, you know, was blended and tasted and there was barrels that got dumped and there's, you know, fruit and all this stuff ends up quite expensive to make. Um, unfortunately, I want to say, <laughs> we'll throw out there that there's a large amount of less educated consumers than, you know, what listen to Brew Strong that, you know, sour beer is a sour beer. So you make a kettle sour and it tastes sour, you know, they're, you know, they're not too um, aware of, you know, the difference in why the, the barrel aged sour is much more expensive than the, the kettle sour. So you kind of run into that, you know, trying to go back to that yeah. marketing thing. Right. So right. it's important to kind of explain that the, the reason why, the difference why. All right. Um, I think, uh, you know, that was a good show. Um, yeah. 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 I think uh, what we'll do in the next show is we'll, we'll start talking about, uh, uh, we'll go, we'll go, we'll start out with a uh, more recipe design. We'll talk about multi, multi beers and how you do those. Great. Yes. Sounds good. I have an important question for the two of you. Sure. At your age. Yes. Do you still manscape? Uh, well, that would be yeah. a, that would be a absolutely positive. Yes. Yes. I, li- I like to hear this. Well, have you tried manscaped.com? I have not. They apparently have trimmers that nice. will not cut your junk. Really? Wow. They're anti-junk cutting trimmers. Wow. That would be a very positive thing. Right. So it's called the lawnmower 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. This is not a joke. And uh, they sent me some samples. Nice. I haven't used it yet. Right. Uh, I'm due. Yeah, I'd imagine there would be like fur hanging out of that box. If, uh... Yeah. So uh, it, it won't cut your junk. Even if one is the size of an avocado and the other is like a walnut? I think that's right. I think it you know, doesn't... I'll you know, go over that terrain? I think size does not... Even if one not... looks like Thanos? <laughs> <laughs> what if I've got a, a particularly large vein popping out on one? This thing says it won't happen. <laughs> so go to manscaped.com yeah. and use coupon code BREWING, and you're going to get nice. like 20% off or something. Excellent. That, Let me is, that is interesting. I'm, I'm waiting for you to... Uh, yeah, 20% off plus free shipping with coupon to, code BREWING. And for you to mow your lawn, and then... Uh, <laughs> I'll report back. Report back. You want, me to take a, you want me to take a video of it? Uh, no, no. Just, you know, any, any blood loss. Uh, right. Yeah. They also have a product, an anti-chafing ball deodorant called Crop Preserver. Nice. Um, I could always use an anti-chafing... Yeah, that uh, I feel like everybody needs. Yes. Um, yeah. Keep them, so. keep them smelling fresh. Your balls will thank you. When I go to the doctor and say, this one's the size of an avocado. <laughs> yeah, but like, he'll go, but you know what? It's yes. very well trimmed. It's very well trimmed and smells <laughs> yeah, delightful. delightful. <laughs> Manscaped.com. Manscaped. Use coupon code uh, brewing. Brewing. All right. So. Okay. Uh, great show. Uh, thanks to our uh, the excellent sponsor, uh, Blickman Engineering. Uh, and check out that manscaped.com. It sounds like fun. Yep. Yeah. Everybody needs a, a, a nice, uh, clean, uh, well deodorized <laughs> area yeah. down there. That's right. Uh, just use the summer months. I appreciate uh, <laughs> a little less uh, bushage down there. A little freshness. A little freshness. A little less hair. Uh, everybody's happy. And uh, that's what we provide around here happiness. That's right. Happiness. And bring information. That's the brain. <laughs> exactly. <door>. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you're listening to the live, stay tuned for the next show. Uh, we're going to continue on with uh, all the barrel uh, do's and don'ts. And uh, if you're not, uh, the next show will be posted in you know, a couple of weeks. And enjoy. Until then, everybody, brew strong. Brew strong, everyone.